Welcome back to Crime Science. Today we're diving into one of the most unsettling, horrific, and tragic cases in criminal history. The story of Lawrence Singleton. It's a case that not only shocks, but also raises critical questions about our justice system. His story is chilling, and it played out in such a way that it changed the way people look at sentencing laws for violent offenders in the U.S. Let's set the stage. It's 1978, and a 15-year-old girl named Mary Vincent is hitchhiking in California. Back then, hitchhiking was pretty commonplace. People didn't think of it as dangerous as we do now. Heck, I even did it when I was young. Mary was just a teenager, looking for a ride to see family, and like a lot of kids her age, probably felt that she could handle herself. Then along came Lawrence Singleton. He looked like an ordinary, harmless, middle-aged man. He was 50, a former merchant seaman, and looked like someone's friendly uncle. So when he offered Mary a ride, she saw no reason to be suspicious. But as it turns out, Singleton wasn't just an ordinary man, and what happened next would change Mary's life forever. At first, everything seemed fine. Singleton was chatty, sharing stories from his days as a seaman. But soon, the atmosphere shifted. After driving for a while, he suddenly veered off course. When Mary asked why they were going in the wrong direction, he made an excuse and pulled over. Then, in a terrifying turn, he attacked her. The assault itself was brutal, but Singleton wasn't done. In an effort to cover his tracks and make sure Mary couldn't identify him, he did something unthinkable. He took out a hatchet and severed both of her forearms, leaving her in a remote canyon, expecting her to die there. But Mary Vincent wasn't going to let him have the last word. Now, you might think that anyone in Mary's position would have given up, but Mary didn't. With sheer willpower and unimaginable strength, she somehow managed to climb up the embankment, bleeding heavily, and walked three miles before finding help. When she was finally discovered by a passing couple, they were shocked and horrified by her injuries, but immediately rushed her to get medical help. Mary's incredible will to survive and her determination would ultimately be the very thing that put Singleton behind bars. With her help, police were able to track him down and her testimony in court was key to convicting him. Now, you'd think after all of this, Singleton would be put away for life. I mean, who wouldn't expect that, right? But the sentencing laws at the time were shockingly lenient. Singleton received only 14 years in prison, which was the maximum sentence for his crimes under California law at the time. Even with this case as horrifying as it is, the law didn't allow for a longer sentence. Needless to say, the public was outraged. Mary and her family, along with countless others, feared that 14 years just wasn't enough. They worried that someone capable of such brutality could strike again. And they weren't alone. Almost everyone who heard about the case felt the same. People couldn't believe that someone could do what Singleton had done and still have a chance at being free again. Now, here's where things get even more frustrating. Singleton didn't even serve the full 14 years. Thanks to California's good behavior policy, he was released after serving just eight years. Eight years for the horrific crime he committed. This decision sparked an uproar, and for good reason. People were outraged that someone so dangerous could be released back into society, especially after showing no real remorse for his actions. When he was released, no one wanted him around. Would you? Several communities protested against his presence, effectively forcing him to move repeatedly. He ended up back in Florida, his home state. But the sense of unease followed him wherever he went. People feared he would reoffend, and they were right to be concerned. Then, in 1997, less than two decades after his brutal attack on Mary Vincent, Singleton struck again. This time, his victim was Roxanne Hayes, a 31-year-old mother of three. She was found dead in Singleton's home, 
stabbed multiple times. Her life was tragically cut short by the very man who, years earlier, had been given a second chance. Singleton was arrested, and this time, there was no way he was getting off lightly. The state of Florida sentenced him to death. The murder of Roxanne Hayes was a devastating reminder that the justice system had failed. Many people, including Mary Vincent, had warned that Singleton was a dangerous man, but their voices went unheard. This time, there was no more chances for Singleton, and he was going to spend the rest of his life in prison. But even in prison, Singleton avoided justice in a way. He died of cancer in 2001, just a few years after his sentencing, evading the death penalty he'd been given. So where does this leave us? Singleton's crimes didn't just shake the lives of his victims and their families, they also left a lasting impact on the criminal justice system. After his release and the murder of Roxanne Hayes, public outcry led to changes in California's sentencing laws for violent offenders. People began to realize that the system needed to do more to protect society from those capable of such horrific crimes. California passed what many referred to as the Singleton Laws, designed to ensure that violent criminals couldn't be released so easily. These laws aimed to increase sentences and restrict parole for particularly dangerous offenders, hoping to prevent the early release of individuals like Singleton. Mary Vincent, who had somehow survived and moved forward with her life, became an advocate for victims' rights. Despite the unimaginable trauma she endured, she went on to speak about the flaws in the justice system, using her experience to help push for change. Her bravery didn't just save her life back in 1978, it also played a role in sparking reforms that could save others. The story of Lawrence Singleton is one of tragedy, survival, and ultimately, the slow march toward justice reform. His crimes exposed deep flaws in the way violent offenders were sentenced and paroled. Flaws that took two lives, one barely saved and another lost, to begin fixing. For Mary Vincent, survival wasn't just about making it through that night back in 1978. It was about using her voice and experience to prevent others from suffering similar fates. And even though the changes in the law couldn't bring back Roxanne Hayes, they served as a powerful reminder that sometimes the cost of not listening can be far too high. Today, when we talk about reform and sentencing in the justice system, we remember cases like Singleton's, not just because of the horror they invoke, but because they teach us about the importance of listening to survivors, of taking threats seriously, and of ensuring that those capable of the worst violence are kept where they can't hurt anyone else. That's the tragic story of Lawrence Singleton, a man whose crimes were so horrific, they changed the law. Thanks for tuning in to Crime Science. Please give us a like on this video if you enjoyed it. If you'd like to hear more from us and see other stories we've done, then hit that subscribe button and keep tuning in to every episode. Thanks again for tuning into this one, and I'll see you in the next one.